Welcome to the fifth Ames of Athletics Address. It's a great day to be a Maroon. <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce President Zimmer, the 13th University of Chicago president, serving now in his 13th year as president, a significant and admirable tenure. The university has flourished throughout his presidency and it is attributable to his vision. We talk about leadership and culture frequently in athletics. At the university, there is no more important or influential leader than President Zimmer. Although an undergraduate at Brandeis, a PhD scholar of mathematics at Harvard, and a former provost at Brown, I think that after several years on the U Chicago faculty, holding administrative leadership positions, and serving as president since 2006, it is fair to say that President Zimmer is a proud Maroon. It is a privilege to have him with us tonight. He has an event downtown and he must leave soon, so I'm grateful that he carved this time out for us. Please welcome President Zimmer. Let me begin first by uh, congratulating everybody. I know there's been a lot of uh, competitive success by this group, uh, many of you last year uh, and already uh, this year. And uh, so congratulations to you as a, as a collective, not just the students, but the, um, uh, but the whole athletics coaching team and, uh, and administrative staff. Now beyond the um, competitive success, there's another type of success that uh, you demonstrate all the time, which in many ways, at least from my point of view, is, uh, is at least important. And that is when you uh, put on a uh, uniform that says University of Chicago on it, uh, you are representing uh, the university to others. Uh, and your, um, uh, the entire way you approach that has been uh, extraordinarily admirable, one of uh, enormous commitment, uh, enormous integrity, uh, a great deal of uh, self-discipline necessary to achieve what you've done. And uh, I think you should, I hope you do, as well, feel uh, proud and gratified at your representation of the university in that way. A uh, university gets put forward in many ways by many people under various circumstances, but that, uh, that act that you do every time you compete in a competitive way wearing and rep uh, University of Chicago paraphernalia and representing the University of Chicago is a very important thing. And um, I know that, uh, that you do an outstanding job of that, and I hope you take that as a great success as well. So people uh, often ask me about athletics at the University of Chicago. They say, well, you're a uh, notoriously serious intellectual environment where everybody has to work incredibly hard. How do you think about athletics inside that um, framework? Uh, my response is, um, is quite consistent, which as I say that I think it's an enormously important and valuable thing. And it's an enormously um, important uh, complement to the uh, academic uh, exercises and the academic part of one's education uh, because there are things you learn being in an athletics environment that you honestly don't learn all that well being in a purely academic environment. Uh, and one of the crucial things about that, of course, is the notion of team, which means that um, you are dependent on other people for uh, your success, and they are dependent on you uh, for their success. And as much as one has an academic environment that's deeply engaged with enormous amount of discourse, discussion, argument, um, the, the nature of the, of the mutual dependency and success of a group rather than purely success of individual doesn't really get reproduced. And you learn an enormous amount from, uh, from that environment. You learn things that are actually critical for how it is one 
uh, will eventually work in the world, how it is one thinks about what it means to achieve something. And um, I think importantly, it also is very expanding for oneself as an individual and in thinking about how you uh, function as a um, part of a team. Now I'm going to give you a slightly peculiar analogy, um, which is as a, a mathematics professor, which I did for a long time, you spend an enormous amount of time fundamentally uh, working alone. Of course, you talk to other people, you teach students, and so on and so forth, but when you're writing um, mathematics research papers, you're not really part of a team. You're sitting in a room all by yourself with dim lights and a pad and a pen. And you do this for hour after hour. On the other hand, when you're president of the University of Chicago, you realize you can't get anything at all done uh, without being part of a, a functioning team that's actually dependent on each other. So actually, the, uh, the, the personal experience I've had just in, um, in my own professional life uh, has uh, forced me to come, uh, become a bit of an athlete in the sense of uh, functioning uh, very clearly in the way of a team. Now, of course, I was too old to be a real athlete, so uh, I had to become president of the university instead. Uh, but uh, in any case, I do want to say how much I appreciate all the commitment that, that you've demonstrated, uh, all the self-discipline you've demonstrated, how much you're learning uh, from this experience, uh, what it actually teaches you about yourself, and, uh, and very importantly, uh, thank you for representing the University of Chicago so well. So thanks a lot, and good evening. I want to thank a couple people before we get on with our program. Uh, Michelle Rasmussen is here with us. She is the Dean of Students in the University, and she is the leader for Campus and Student Life. So she is the person um, that we report into and um, allows us to do all the good work that we have been able to do these last few years that Michelle has been our leader, and she spent time to be here um, tonight with you. We also have other people across campus, mostly fans of Derek, I think, who uh, wanted to join us here tonight, and I think Derek's family as well. So it's always great when other people around campus uh, join for our activities. This event has become our opportunity to gather as a maroon community and honor the traditions and values of athletics at the University of Chicago. I believe it is important for you to learn that you share connection with the Maroons who came before you. You will forever be part of something greater than yourselves, your teams, your university, and our Maroon family. There are two pillars that formed our foundation at the turn of the century and early in the 20th century. Amos Alonzo Stagg is a name that you hear often. He is a legendary figure in the sport of football and was the athletic director for 40 years. Our philosophy and value system still align with what he so wisely stated. Winning isn't worthwhile unless one has something finer and nobler behind it. And Gertrude Dudley was the first person to oversee women's physical culture, as it was called then, her belief that athletics develop selflessness, honor, fairness, courage, and a sense of responsibility, likewise are attributes we believe result from your experiences today. We are known a lot for our past, a founding member of the Big Ten Conference, early participation by women in sports, the original wishbone Shape C and Monsters of the Midway, later taken up by the Bears, the first Heisman Trophy winner in 1935 with Jay Berwanger, followed by the elimination of football in 1939. Yet they always seem to omit the return of football in 1969. In fact, we are in our 50th season currently of modern era football. As proud as we are of this history, as compelling as it is, what I am most proud of is our story doesn't end there. It actually gets better. We are one of the best Division III programs in the country. You are part of building a modern legacy. And you are the model for being collegiate 
student athletes, striving for the best in everything you do. Thriving as teammates in competition while being leaders on campus and pursuing your intellectual curiosities to learn and grow. Congratulations on being the 12th ranked Division III program last year based on your individual and team successes. 35 of you were named All-Americans, 36 All-Region, three were UAA top performers, and six were Conference Rookies of the Year. Congratulations to our current top 20 nationally ranked fall teams, men's and women's cross country, who also just had strong performances in the UAA championship, men's and women's soccer, and volleyball. Congratulations to football for a huge homecoming win over Ripon on Saturday, and welcome women's lacrosse. We look forward to watching you and represent us this spring. You can clap for yourselves. <laughs> And please know that all of you, no matter your role or best performance, you are part of making us better. Whether it's your ability, your leadership, your character, your attitude, your work ethic, or a combination, you make us better and are part of our success. Our Hall of Fame ceremony on Friday reminded us that none of us are alone in victory or defeat. We all need help. Oftentimes, we are the help and not the hero, and there is honor in both. And finally, I wanted to mention that last night, I attended the NCA Woman of the Year Banquet because class of 2018 track and field member Ade Ayula was honored as one of nine finalists among 30 in the room, and after 581 women were nominated across all divisions. You can go ahead and clap. <laughs> Ade wasn't the so-called winner last night, but there are no losers in this competition. Ade beamed proudly all night as a U Chicago Division III representative. She embodies all that we value. She describes herself as a servant leader and is studying medicine at Stanford with ambitions of helping others and particularly those in less advantaged communities across the globe. She is kind and she is humble while also being fierce and bold. So Maroons, be good teammates, be bold, be fearless, and most of all, be proud, Maroons. Be very, very proud. Ma what? Ma what? Ma what? Come on. <laughs> I know some of you may not like that cheer, but I have to tell you that um, Coach Resch found an old uh, songbook that um, has some of the Chicago cheers in it. So just to give you a sense of, I think that one's not so bad. There's one that's just raw, varsity raw. Would you rather me go to that one? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> There's a hello, bello, Chicago, rah, 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 Chicago, yay. <laughs> so, I'm sticking with my what, I'm sorry. It's just the thing. And also before I introduce our next speaker, um, I wanna thank all of you who thanked me for um, your new Adidas team gear. I've received many thank yous like this and signed by you, written by you, um, and just uh, an amazing feeling to feel like something pretty small, but we all know very important, um, had such an impact. So thank you for showing your gratitude. Certainly it was the right thing and least we could do to uh, help your experience. So I now need to introduce uh, Raja Batar, uh, relatively new. Raja is Assistant Provost and Executive Director of the Center for Identity and Inclusion. Raja's undergraduate work was in psychology at Boston University. And hey, what about those Red Sox? 
Yeah, we're my Boston people. Come on. <laughs> they then completed masters and doctoral work at the University of Vermont and UCLA. And before U Chicago, Raja spent time at the University of the Redlands and most recently joined us from UCLA. I invited Raja to share their vision for the Center of Identity and Inclusion and the work uh, they are prioritizing for this year. So please welcome Raja Batar. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Awesome. Um, thank you, Aaron. Really appreciate it. Uh, I've, I went in last night feeling like I couldn't lose either way because I went to undergrad in Boston to like Red Sox all the way, but then I lived in LA for the last 11 years, so I got to go Dodgers all the way. So uh, I feel like I, I got to eat pie regardless of what happened yesterday, so I just had a whole pie by myself. So. Um, <laughs> It was just whether it was apple pie or strawberry pie was like the big decision. Um, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me here. I wanted to share a little bit about the work that we are doing um, and congratulations on all the incredible accolades that you all have gotten. That's just amazing. Uh, in my short seven months at the university, I've realized what an imp incredible and important culture that athletics plays at the university. Um, one, just under Erin's leadership, I, I've just been amazed at the way her charisma and her uh, advocacy for you all as students and, and colleagues and community members, um, but also what I've appreciated that we share uh, an important value in that you all are not just athletes, you know? You all are scholar athletes, and that's really important because you all are here because you are freaking amazingly brilliant. You all know that, right? Yes. Y'all are at the University of Chicago. Y'all are freaking amazingly brilliant, and you're also incredibly talented. And so that's a pretty powerful combination. And the way that you all are able to do that on the field and in the classroom has been something that I have been amazed at just in my short time at the university. And I hope you know that even though I, most of us at the university may not be at every game, every meet, every scrimmage, uh, know that we are thinking of you, we're rooting for you, and that's really, really important. Uh, and my role, I think, is uh, something that I truly value. I, People have often said, why the hell did you leave LA to come to Chicago? Um, and I must say, it was because of the students. Um, when I came to the university to check out the Center for Identity and Inclusion, I realized the passion for why we want to do this work and that the students across the university, I actually met with several athletes uh, at one of my interviews, and I realized that not only are you passionate about doing really well athletically and really well academically, but you want to create a better world. And that's somewhere, something that I want to be a part of. Um, so at the Center for Identity and Inclusion, we've been working really hard to revamp our staff. Um, as of last week, we are fully staffed for the first time since 2014. We have 11 professional staff. We have about eight graduate students. We have about 10 undergraduate students. And we have about a team of about 30 volunteers. So we have a larger staff than we ever had in definitely in your lifetime on campus, and probably uh, in my, definitely my lifetime on campus as well. And so some of the things that we've been working on is thinking about what are the priorities for us as a community, and what's the work that we want to do to create a more inclusive, more, more healthy, more welcoming U Chicago. And I actually think these are very relative and relatable to ath athletics as well. Um, so the three parties that we've been working on is community, consistency, and collaboration. Um, and for me, when I think about community, it means that we actually care for each other, and we see the value that all of us bring to the table, whether we are the, the goalie or the captain or whatever athletic term you want to you wanna use in there. Uh, and so for us at the, at the Center for Identity and Inclusion, we've been thinking about how do the three offices that fall under our umbrella not only foster a sense of inclusion within the center, but how do we actually serve as catalysts for the work that we do across the university, and you all are a big part of that. Uh, the second part is consistency. You know, I, as you all know, uh, in athletics, I, consistency is helpful because that's how we win, right? Uh, being consistent not only in supporting each other, but also knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, knowing where we need to grow, and the continuous training and the work that we do is really, really critical. And so we've been working on trying to develop policies and practices that allow us to actually support you all better and providing important and critical relationships across the campus. The third part is collaboration. We clearly can't do this work by ourselves. You all, um, this is one of the most diverse athletic groups of students I've ever stood in front of in my life. And that's a pretty testament to not only you all as athletes and scholars, but also a commitment that the university has to attract not only the best students, but also the best athletes and people that represent the broader complexity of who we are as a university. And so collaboration for us is really means that we get to work together to think about how do we actually be creative in the work that we do in creating a more inclusive environment. 
One fun little uh, project that we've taken under, underway is the Common Book Initiative, the U Chicago Common Book Initiative. We realize that we love books, right? We're all here because at least I like books, and I've, everyone I talk to seems to like books. Um, so we're actually going to give away a thousand free books this quarter. Uh, of, and how many of you like books? Anyone? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I wasn't getting much response there. I was like, I thought we were at the University of Chicago, right? So how many of you like graphic novels or comic books? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So our first common book is going to be a graphic novel. It's called The Best That We Could Do. And it's about a, a story of a Vietnamese American woman and her family migrating from Vietnam to the US. And her actually uh, tracing back their journey uh, back home and seeing what it meant to actually uh, not only represent yourself, but represent your family and community. And I think that's also where, when Aaron and I were talking, I was like, this feels like it would be such a cool opportunity for athletes to think about what does it mean for you as a team member, as a community member, to understand where we come from. And the, you know, as President Zimmer said, you all represent us as a university, as, as a community. So where does that go and how does that work? Um, and so I'm really, really excited about that. So I, Aaron will share some more information with you in uh, a couple of weeks about what that looks like, but also I just wanted to share with you all that as uh, a new staff member on campus, um, truly I look up to you all as community leaders. The number of people, I see a couple of familiar faces, faces in the room, and I can tell you that already what I love about our athletes is that not only are you really good on on the field and in the classroom, but I see you all in, across campus. I was just at the vigil uh, a few minutes ago, and I'm going to another event later today, and I, I can guarantee you that there's at least going to be five or six athletes there. And that's pretty cool that you all are engaged as holistic community members. And uh, what Aaron is trying to create, what, we, what Michelle's trying to create, um, we are trying to build a better university for you and, and change. I keep hearing, you know, uh, it's where fun goes to die, and I want to change that dynamic, and I keep, uh, I keep hearing and I'm, I keep trying to make this new phrase that where inclusion comes to thrive. I do feel that, and our athletes are really a big part of making that happen. I know it's cheesy, but I like it. Um, cheesy is good. We're, we're a campus of cheesy people. I like it. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop, but let you know that my invitation to you all is to get engaged in the work that we are doing. If you're interested, uh, reach out to us. We will send you, um, I'll work with Aaron to send you all information about how you can get involved and learn about more that the Center for Identity and Inclusion is working on, uh, specifically the Multicultural Center, the LGBTQ Center, and the Student Support Services offices. Um, and then ways that you actually, what ideas you have to help us do the work that we do better. What are the partnerships and collaboration we can utilize to actually make and cultivate the Utrecht that you want to see happen? So thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your incredible talents that you share with us. And thank you for representing all of us and the communities that we bring together today. Congratulations and welcome. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for attending this year's Ames of Athletics event. I have the great honor and privilege in introducing our speaker this evening, Dr. Derek Brooms. Dr. Brooms attended the college from 1992 to 1996, where he was a two-sport athlete in both football and track and field. When he suited up for the Maroons, Mr. Brooms was an absolute nightmare for the opposing team's defense. In his four years here, Mr. Brooms was an NCAA Division III statistical champion, All-American, and two-time UAA Player of the Year at both wide receiver and kick return position. In 1995, he led the nation in kickoff return average, and in his final year here in 1996, he was a recipient of the Stag Medal and also captured his second UAA Sprint Champion title for both indoor and outdoor track. Needless to say, Mr. Brooms was quite the, athlete uh, quite the athlete during his time at the college. After receiving his Bachelor of Arts in African American Studies from the college, he went on to obtain his PhD in Sociology from Loyola University of Chicago. Since then, Dr. Brooms has worked at several institutions across the country while specifically focusing on the lived experience of African American males and the representation of African American identity and culture within the media. Now, Dr. Brooms is an Associate Professor of Sociology and Africana Studies at the University of Cincinnati. He specializes in the sociology of African Americans in urban environments with research and activism that focuses on educational equity, race and racism, diversity and inequality, and identity. Dr. Brooms works extensively with young African American men by teaching, coaching, and mentoring them in a way that nurtures their success and help propel them forward in life. Just like his days as a Maroon, Dr. Brooms has received many awards while working in his, respective, <clears throat> in his respective field. Some of these accolades include 2016 Presidential Exemplary Multicultural Teaching Award, the 2015 Diverse Issues Emerging Scholar, and the 2014 NEH Summer Institute Fellow. 
I know I speak for the rest of us in the room when I say that we are very honored to have you speak in front of us today. So without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Derek Brooms. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, where I'm from, we do call and response. So when people don't say anything back, you just gotta keep asking. So first I wanna start by uh, thanking Aaron for the invitation to come out and speak today and obviously a host of distinguished guests and folks who work here on campus. Uh, President Zimmer, my friend and colleague, Dr. Regina Dixon Reeves, Dean Ramsey, uh, who I haven't met but clearly is here doing the work. I'm gonna mention, as part of my talk, I'm gonna mention a lot of names. And the reason for that will kind of come to fruition throughout my talk. Many of these names you may not know and some of the names you will know, so I will ask for a little bit of grace and you to bear with me. Um, for that. I also want to thank uh, my family and my friends for coming out and obviously continuously supporting me in all of my endeavors. In particular, uh, one of my daughters asked me to give her a shout out, so I got to make sure that I do that. Uh, Gabs, there she is. All right. So one of the uh, most interesting things about sports is that it really allows you to put things in perspective. And so as I think about offering you all a little bit of perspective, I need to uh, say thanks um, and give acknowledgement. So first I wanna say thanks and give acknowledgement to John Angelis, uh, who passed away recently. Uh, coach Angelis was never one of my own coaches, but he was always a coach to me. Also wanna in particular uh, give thanks and send love to the family of Coach Brian Baldea, a longtime baseball coach here who uh, during my year as a student athlete and my years here coaching, um, was just one of the best people that I knew. And so I know that the community, not only the University of Chicago community, but also their families and their home communities, uh, miss them dearly. I also want to give acknowledgments to three people who are also no longer with us. Uh, the first one is Freddie Braun. Again, these are names you won't hear. Um, I'll tell you a little bit of stories about uh, these individuals. Um, in a second after I give you their name. So Freddie Braun, who passed away in 2012. Sherman Galbraith. Uh, Freddie Braun was my teammate on football, and he also played baseball here at the university. Graduated in 1997. Sherman Galbraith, who was my roommate, uh, who was a teammate on football um, and also alum, uh, passed away in early 2003 to a drowning incident. And then last but not least, Philip Coleman, um, who was my teammate for only one year. He could only play one year here at the university uh, because he had work-life obligations. They required him to work a little bit more that the football schedule didn't allow. And unfortunately, in 2012, uh, Phil was killed by police officers. Uh, he was having a psychotic episode um, in an altercation with his grandmother, the police were called to the scene. They were, his family members asked for him not to be taken into police custody. They asked him to take him to a mental health facility. The police responded that we take people to prison. They took him to prison. Uh, you know, a few days later, he died because he was tasered after a psychotic episode. And so we have ways in which our lives are connected with people. Um, and that's really, kind of at the heart that I want to talk to you about today. So there are some people in the room who their presence, their encouragement, and their support have been ongoing. So I think about folks that I still call coach, like Coach Resley Resch, um, who is a phenomenal administrator here, is a longtime coach. Um, I can think about Coach Amy Reifert. I can think about Mike McGrath. I can think about uh, Leo Coker. And my running joke with Coach Coker is that I always had that shoulder injury so I could never come out to wrestling practice, uh, primarily because I didn't want to get folded up. So uh, thanks, Coach, for never in actually inviting me out to wrestling practice. I've got a group of classmates that I went to school with here. Um, I was recruited to play football here at the University of Chicago after an 0-10 season. So one of the first things I want to talk to you all about is a little bit about commitment. And one of the things that athletics calls us to do is be committed beyond ourselves. And so I was being recruited from a team that was 0-10 the year before I came to university. 
And one of the things that I'll always hold dear is that I've had some phenomenal coaches. Um, again, not only the ones who were here and in place, but those folks who actually coached me. And so I want to mention three coaches in particular, excuse me, four coaches in particular. The first one is Neil Bailey L. He was my high school football coach. The second one is Greg Quick. He was my first coach here uh, for football at the university. The second one is Richard Maloney, who was my coach my last two years. And then, last but not least, uh, Coach Michael Risha, who was my track and field coach. And I'm going to say some things that connects all of these coaches. One of the most valuable lessons that I learned from them was the power of relationships. And so there are some life lessons that I want to share. And I'll begin with a Yorubu proverb that says, if I stand tall, it's because I'm standing on the shoulders of others. The things that I accomplished in my athletic career, uh, some of the stats I actually really still talk about today, just because. Uh, so as you heard <clears throat> that was mentioned, my led the Division III in kickoff return average with a 35.2 average. But my favorite part was leading the UAA with a 56.5 yard average on kickoff returns. Part of that was because of the people that I played with, and you might have heard these names, Frank Baker, Joseph McCoy, Wesley McGee, and then there's a bunch of names that you, again, probably haven't heard, like Jeff Stanzak, Gavin Bradley, Philly Duziak, Arlen Wiley, and the list goes on and on, such as Jim Pearl, Dan O'Brien, Tony Dragovich, David Swanson. I've got a paper basically filled with names. <clears throat> but I also had some folks that I was connected to who I never played sports with, like John Fitzgerald, Mark Mosier, Aaron Sloan, Kate Panetta, Raina Echoes, uh, and, and so many others. So let me talk to you a little bit about commitment. One of the best parts about being a student athlete, scholar athlete, here at the University of Chicago is the standard of excellence. That standard was presented to me again by a group of men who played football here after going 0-10 the year before I got here. And the thing that I'll always remember is that the standard for excellence was fervent when each one of them. And so I've got a little bit of a funny story to tell, and it kind of goes two ways. The first part might not be as funny to you as it is to me. And so you can imagine uh, growing up, excuse me, uh, graduating from high school, I was all of about 135 pounds. And so the trainers aptly called me the skinny kid. All right? In fact, I think my shoulder pads and my equipment weighed about as much as I did. And so as they saw me kind of flapping around and running around, uh, Mark Timmons and Lisa, uh, Lisa uh, they, they called me the skinny kid. And so the first day I showed up to football camp at Pierce Hall, which most of you don't know, uh, which is really weird to walk around campus and not really know most of the buildings, but it's kind of nice to walk around campus because I don't have to take any classes. So that's kind of my fun part, right? So I show up to football camp, and there are some folks who are checking us into the table, uh, checking us in. And I ask, is this the place we sign up uh, or report in for football? And, and the individual says, yes. And she says, excuse me, but this is only for football players. Say, that's what I just asked you. This is for the football team. She said, yeah, but only, you know, you, you look a little bit too small. This is only for the University of Chicago football players. And so one of the things that I remembered was that by the time that I graduate, that individual will know who I was, right? And so how did that kind of manifest itself? And so beyond the individual accolades, a couple of things I want to share is that one of my proudest moments is to go from an 0-10 team the year before I got here until 1995, where we finished eight and two, which was the most wins since 1905. The second thing is, in my sophomore year, second year here, uh, our football team led Division Three in rushing. Right? And again, I'll make mention of Joseph McCoy and Frank Baker, and I was just like the decoy that the defense really didn't worry about because Frank got the ball every three downs, and then Joseph got the ball every two. So as long as we got a first down, then that means I didn't really get the ball too much. But there's the thing about community. And so one of the things that makes me, or made me, uh, resonated with most of my accomplishments in football was because I ran track and field. And I'll give you a quote uh, by one of my favorite athletes. I've got two, actually. One is from Steve Prefontaine, and he said, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. So as I look out into the crowd and the audience today, 
my main question to you is, on an everyday basis, are you willing to give your best? And the beautiful thing about Division Three sports is that folks don't come out and watch us practice. So I used to teach at the University of Louisville. I teach now at the University of Cincinnati. And if you go to football practice, in particular, you go to basketball practice, they got to close the doors, they got to keep people out. Well, here at the University of Chicago, there's really not anybody keeping folks out of practice because nobody's showing up to our practices. In fact, what I understand is there's still people here asking, do we actually have a football team? All right? And so we're not confused about where we stand, but we're also not confused about what we're called to do. And so this notion of giving anything less than our best is what it is that we're, we're called here to do. And so as I think about my own family, there's a couple of clear questions that I always ask, and that is, what is your attitude and what is your effort? And so it's easy to be excited on game day, competition day, when the fans show up, family shows up, friends show up, and they're ready to cheer you on. But are you showing up to practice with the level of enthusiasm that will push you beyond what you thought you could accomplish? There's lots of days that we've spent here trying to carve out our own paths and what it is that we're trying to accomplish. But as Jesse Owens said, Awards become corroded, friends gather no dust. And I think, as I think about my experiences here, I think about folks like Aaron Rogacheski, Dan Crookston, Sean McKay, Brian Orgler, Chris Doyle, Gary Brooks, Bannon Stroud, Jennifer Sheridan, Sarah Hallman, Courtney Bell, Nate Wadier, Marlon Smith, Eric Smart, Mark Pataki, Drew Christ, Jimmy Wells, Booker Witt, Mario Small, Margaret Pizer, Michelle Rizzo, Neil Rodak. These are folks who have come through these halls and have left legacies of success. Here's what I want to tell you. Athletics is a place where history, the present, and the past are always simultaneously merged. During my time here, I had the privilege of getting to meet and talked to John J. Berwanger. And one of the things that he said to me when he was somewhere in his 90s, he said, every time you step on the field or any realm of competition, leave no regrets. And I leave that to you. We don't get time back. We don't get yesterday back. And so what we're called to do is both individually and collectively find different ways to contribute. And the three guys that I mentioned earlier, Fred Braun, Sherman Galbraith, and Phil Coleman. Fred Braun and Sherman Galbraith never started a game in their football careers, and yet they were some of the best teammates that I've ever had. Because they showed up, they were committed, and they never made any excuses. And so as I think about the ways in which I've incorporated what I've experienced in my athletic career, both as a student athlete and as a coach, I want to talk to you a little bit about winning. The most important thing about winning is that every day we have an opportunity to do so. Because what I fervently believe is that we are our only competition. I came in at 135 pounds. The coaches wanted me to be 165 pounds. And I said, coaches, there's not enough peanut butter to help me make up that gap. And so by the time my third year, I was weighing about 167 pounds. I remember talking to the coaches, and what they asked me to do was very simple. They said, focus on you. And so one of the benefits of having participated in track, as you all know for those folks who are both cross-country athletes and as well track and field athletes, is that you don't, you know, if it's raining and cold outside, it's raining and cold for everybody. I don't really know why we do outdoor track in March in Chicago. But that's a whole different story. But they said, you know, one of the things that you just need to worry about is your own effort. And so I've got two kind of what I think are resonating athletic experiences that I want to share with you, and then I'll bring it all back together. And so I remember my first outdoor track meet. I didn't run my first year uh, primarily because the week before our first football game, my freshman year, I broke my wrist. And so I actually missed the first three weeks of the season and spent most of the, you know, the winter and the spring rehabbing. And if you can imagine trying to convince people that you're on the football team 
and you're in the weight room and all you have is the bar because I couldn't hold any weight and when people walk in, you're actually struggling with just the bar and folks are looking like, I thought you said you was on the football team. <laughs> Don't judge me yet, right? And so I didn't play, uh, I didn't participate on track and field my first year. And in fact, the reason why I participated my sophomore year through my graduation was because of two guys that I mentioned, Marlon Smith and Eric Smart. And they simply uh, were my football teammates and they came and said, man, we need some help. We need somebody else. And so as I think about this notion of community, uh, that's really critical. So my first funny, uh, it's not really funny, but funny track and field story is, uh, running the 400. So where's the, where's the folks on the track team? Any training track folks out here? Uh, how many folks have ever run the 400 before, regardless of you? Okay, so you'll appreciate this story. Anybody ever heard of booty lock? <laughs> All right. So first four, you know, first outdoor meet, I ran a couple of indoor meets and I think Coach Arisha was being gracious. He kept me in all the short stuff. I said, Coach, if I got to count laps, I'm not going to make it, right? That was my kind of thing. And so we're, we're outdoors, and he says, well, D, you can run the four because there's only one lap, so you don't have to count. It's like, ah, oh, you're killing me, right? And so I was like, Coach, you know, I was trying to negotiate with him. I was like, I think we should, like, let the team get going, and you could put me last. He's like, D, don't worry about it. I got it. You're going to go first. I'm like, you're going to make me go first? Like, nah, I'm kind of fast. You know, like, put me last. Uh, and this is where you can kind of learn a few things. So he puts me first, and again, outdoor track. We've got the stagger. I don't really know what I'm doing at this point because I'm still new to the sport. And my first inclination is I just want to catch the guy on the outside lane. Right? So I catch the guy on the outside lane about halfway through the curve. Then I say, I want to catch the next guy. And I catch the next guy, you know, another 40 meters later. And so I just keep, you know, as I'm going, I just keep saying, I want to catch the, I was probably in like lane two. And again, we're out here at Stag Field and you, you guys can start to anticipate what happens, right? So I've got all this focus on, you know, catching this guy, catching that guy, catching that guy. But of course, it's a 400 meter race. Uh, I come out of the curve and nobody told me that there was a piano waiting on me. <laughs> right? You guys didn't, didn't catch that, right? All right, so I probably ran about a 54 that day, 55, I'll, I'll say 55. I think I ran 20 seconds in the last 100 meters, right? Because I had nothing left by the time I came out of the last curve. And so I, you know, I went back to the coach and I said, man, you know, I was giving it everything I got. Why didn't you put me last? He said, because I knew you was going to die. It's like, come on. Come on. Right? So part of that story that, you know, is always funny to me is uh, just focus on what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, so I always appreciated Coach Arisha for kind of seeing the ways in which I could be useful uh, to the team. And so kind of what does that mean? as I think about what we can do with athletics. One of the things athletics has done is allowed me to build community in ways that go well beyond myself. And this is where it connects back to commitment. When you're committed to other people, when you're committed to the team, this is what resonates, right? And so how is it that folks can be excited and committed to showing up and putting in work every day coming from an 0-10 season, right? It's because we all have the great potential and the possibility to do our best. And so one of, my, you know, one of my favorite things about being an alum at the University of Chicago is that I get to go to some of our athletic events, uh, basically whenever it works out for my schedule. And I want to mention some names of some folks. A couple of them are in the room, and I know a couple of them are not in the room because they are alums. Uh, but I want to point out to you that you have an impact on folks that go well beyond your teammates or other fellow athletes. And so one person in particular I think about is Stephanie Anderson, women's basketball alum. Also think about Madison, another alum. And then I think about some of the women on the current team, such as Mia and Ola. There are ways in which you perform and commit and show up and contribute in ways that make young people pay attention to who you are. I want to make sure that you all understand that we have an incredible, incredible responsibility to each other, and we have an incredible responsibility to those folks who are coming behind us. And so some of the things that I've accomplished are because people like Joseph McCoy demanded excellence from the time that I showed up on campus. People like Coach Quick, Coach Maloney, Coach Arisha 
And I can, again, go broader than that. Coach Baldea, Coach Resch, Coach Reifert, they all expected us to perform at our absolute best. And there was no room for excuses. And so let me talk to you a little bit about winning. Right? What do you do if you're on the swimming and diving team, if you're on the cross country team, or if you're on the track team? And I'm going to use those for this point in particular. And the person that's lining up next to you, you absolutely know that they're faster than you. What do you do? You go faster. You go faster. There's a guy who I race with. I won't say his name just because I know they record and I don't want him to think I was giving him props. <laughs> Every meet I showed up to, he went to Emory. Every meet I showed up to where we had to race against Emory, I was mad. I was like, come on, why does this dude got to be in my heat, right? And this was a guy who actually uh, was an all UA performer. He was an all American, uh, an incredible student athlete, but even more importantly, just an incredible guy. And so that's what I take away from my experiences as I think about what it is that we're called here to do. I'm standing in front of you. I played 12 games of high school football, 12. I played four my junior year and eight my senior year. There was no way that anybody could look at me again, graduating at 135 pounds, and think that I would accomplish some of the things that I accomplished during my playing career. But I didn't accomplish those things because of me. I accomplished them because the folks who were in front of me and who were around me demanded my best. And this, I think, are part of the aims of athletics, is that we have to show up and be present, not just in any way, but in our best selves because we have people who are counting on us. When I think about some of the friends that I've gathered, when I think about the community that I'm engaged with, when I think about some of the community work that I've done, when I think about some of my own coaching, what I've really tried to do is replicate what's been presented before me. And so as you think about, in football in particular, when we talk about wave the flag, this is not just a statement. It's a homage and an honor and a responsibility to those folks who've come before us. As we think about people like Bruce Montella, Neil Cowie, Jeff Stolte, and others, as I've mentioned, there's a, there's a standard of excellence that we're being called to do and engage in and sustain. Athletics is just one arena in which we make those contributions. And I beg to ask you, how do we transition and translate those into the communities in which we are engaged in? One of the things that I miss most is participating in sports, but my body doesn't really miss it, right? But I also miss working with young people. And so I've got a few folks in the room that I've had the privilege to teach and coach. And to me, this is what makes me the teacher that I am, is the opportunity to have participated in sports. So let me leave you with two thoughts. The first one is, in order for us to be our best selves, we have to believe that we can always be who we are. Some of us have accomplished great things in our athletic careers. Some of us have accomplished great things in the classrooms. And some of us have great opportunities set right before us. But it's not just about you. What teammate, what classmate, what peer are you going to pull with you to achieve more? As I think about the concept of team, I always think about together, everybody achieves more. And I hope that you understand that there is no one way for any of us to reach the goals and the heights that we dare to reach if we're not able to lean on, learn from, share, and push each other to our best selves. Secondly, I'll end with a statement that my coach, uh, Coach Quick, always told us. He said, <clears throat> excellence is your requirement. Fun 
is the benefit. We must be excellent in all of our efforts because otherwise we slip not into engagement. We slip not into being who we are and we don't honor those who have come before us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. Have a great night. So I asked Derek to stay up here because I want him to actually show you what is in his bag. Um, he actually asked this of me last year and we were able to come through. So take that on out and... I asked for some paper. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> probably wasn't Adidas when you had So it. when I was here it was not Adidas. <laughs> uh, the gray sweatshirts, we called them John Normans. And our uniforms were made by Russell, so. Yes. <laughs> and the Russells were around. Some of you wore Russells. You're in the room, I'm sure. Uh, so <laughs> upgrade to the Adidas. We got him in his lucky number seven. Um, and yes, your grays are far from the John Norman grays for sure. So I uh, just want to thank Derek for coming back to campus and um, speaking to us and some of the highlights. First of all, I'm going to give a shout out to Gabs. Where are you? <laughs> I'll give you another one. All right. Um, and actually, one of the things I've gotten to know Derek uh, mostly through bringing all his girls to women's basketball games, volleyball games. So um, always a great dad when he's encouraging his daughters to uh, be what, do what we do. So there's nothing more powerful than girl power. So keep it going. Um, some of the highlights. I think we can take from that is first starting always with thank, thanking and acknowledging and gaining perspective that way. A commitment to be committed beyond ourselves, that relationships are really what this is all about and that uh, friends don't gather gut dust. I like that. Um, leave no regrets. Find ways to contribute. Focus on what you are trying to do. Show up and be present as our best selves. Engagement, and that includes into our communities, believe in who we are, and together we all achieve more. So thanks for everything you do, Maroons. Thank you again, Derek. It's been a pleasure and an honor. This is the end of Aims of Athletics. <laughs>